Hi everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to the ultimate beginner's airbrush guide. Grab yourself a coffee because this one is going to be a long one. Right guys, we're moving on to the first stage and it is airbrush. Now the first thing I want you to do before you do anything is learn how your airbrush works. The airbrush that I've chose for today's video is the new Harder and Steenbeck Ultra 2024. Now the reason why I picked this one, I think it is an amazing brush for a beginner. One, it's weighted. You want something weighted and sturdy in your hand. You don't, some, don't want something too light. You don't want a brush that's got a very, very soft trigger. You want something that gives you feedback in what you're doing and this brush has all these features on it. You're gonna see these features with this brush through the video today. So the first thing you need to do is learn how to strip your brush down and maintain it. That's the first thing. A good clean brush will always produce good clean work. So I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit closer and we're gonna strip this one down because I've left painting it on purpose for over a week. So we've got a sticky trigger, it's not coming back. So we'll strip it down and I'll show you how to maintain your airbrush. Right guys, maintaining your brush and stripping it down, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to keep your brush in tip top condition and makes your life a lot easier. Cleaning products, my go-to is thinners. Because I do a lot of automotive painting, I've always got thinners to hand, so I always use this. Cleans it through really quick and easy. Some of the airbrush cleaners can be very mild and you'll be struggling to sort of clean through with them. So that's why my go-to is always thinners. And then I always have a pot of water as well. Always have a pot of water because you can mix your paints with this as well. Easy cleaning products, kitchen towel, cut up into squares, nice and simple. We've got some cotton wool pads, again, really cheap, dead easy to get hold of. They come in really handy. Cotton buds or Q-tips, another good cleaning product to use. And little dentist like flossing sticks, they've got like a little pipe cleaner on the end. These you can pick up really cheap, come in really handy. So they're the cleaning products, stripping your brush, Nice and simple, take the back off. This unscrews and you take the back off like that. That exposes this piece here. You've got the piece of your needle sticking out the back. You've got your sleeve setting on the ultra. That can then slide off, put that to one side. So that's your brush strip down that far. Then undo this piece, this holds your needle in place. So when you tighten this up, it locks your needle in place. So when you move back your trigger, it just keeps that needle nice and tight. So you undo this and then slide the needle out. Now that, that has got a lot of dirty paint on it. So that's your needle out. The cups on these are the simplest ones. You just twist and pull the cup away. Front of the brush, you've got a grippy thread here. You undo this and that takes the front of the brush off. And then you've got the floating nozzle just here. They slide out like that. So that is your brush stripped. That is as far as I would go. You don't have to do this strip down every time you finish airbrushing. You really don't. If you keep your brush flushed through between colors and at the end of your airbrush session, you'll be good to go. But if you do leave painting it like I have on this for this demo, this is how you'd strip it down and this is how you clean it. So the first thing we'll do is clean the needle. Get one of your cotton wool pads, grab yourself a little bit of thinners, drop a bit of thinners on your pad, nice and simple. Grab your needle and then just place your needle on your pad and slide through like that with your thinners or your airbrush cleaner. Just do a few passes and you can see the paint that's on that needle. So now that needle is nice and clean. Nice and simple. That's your needle done. You can then use the same pad. We've got some paint, leftover paint in here. So you can put your cotton wool pad in, 
wipe inside the cup just with your finger and this is stubborn paint that's dried up in here but it is coming off with the thinners give your cup a wipe through like that so nice and simple so that's your cup nice and clean dead easy the back of the body if you've got any paint on this you can use the same piece and just wipe that off these brushes wipe and clean up very very easy because they're a triple plate chrome on these brushes so a very nice finish on these so they're nice and easy to clean so you've got your cup your back part of the body and your needle clean when it comes to the floating nozzle if you get dried up paint in here there's a little hole just in here that white ring there is a teflon washer so they are solvent proof all this if you wanted to you could get yourself a little stainless steel cup drop some thinners in and you could soak that if you had dried up paint in it so you could drop that in a little glass jar or something with thinners in and soak it leave it for about an hour get your dentist stick and these are perfect for going inside the nozzle like that and just spinning inside and cleaning like that. I'm gonna drop a little bit of thinners on this, just on the bit of the bristles. Push that in, give it a twist like that. And that will clean your paint out of your nozzle. And you can see, you can see the paint on that, what's coming off that. So just give that a little clean through like that. And that would be your nozzle nice and clean. Now what you can do is, what I tend to do is, once I've cleaned this through, I'll blow it through and then just hold this up to the light and look down the hole and you'll see the tiny little hole here, you'll see through. You'll just see the light coming through. That's a good way of testing, just to see your nozzles nice and clean. So that's your nozzle clean. Your front air cap, this is a fixed piece. So on this air cap, you've got a rubber ring that goes around here. I wouldn't soak these in thinners because over soaking these in thinners, these rubber rings here will start to swell up if you're using an aggressive cleaner. What I would do with this is get your cotton bud, drop a little bit of cleaner on the end of that, and then just poke that in there and twist. And this will clean the paint off your nozzle at the front because you will get a build up of paint on this. So just give that a little push through and clean like that. nice and simple and clean through. So that's nice and clean. So that's your nozzle done. Then you can move on to the brush itself. Now, the only place you need to clean on the brush is basically this front end because this is where your paint's going in and it comes out the front of your brush here. So you can get your cotton bud again, drop a little bit of cleaner on and then where your cup mounts just here, drop your cotton bud in, give it a little twist and clean out any paint that's in the front just here, like that. You can see the paint that's left in there. So that's nice and clean. You can also get your cotton bud, push in here and give a little clean here, like that. Just a little clean through that would be the front of your brush clean. Now you can use the pipe cleaner one again, the tool, and go in the front and you can just push through and that will clean through to where your cup is just there. So you can just give that a little twist and clean that way. That would be your brush clean. Give the body a wipe down. That's your ultra, stripped, cleaned and now ready to put back together. Now putting these back together 
really simple and this is why I chose this brush today because hardwood steam back brushes are by far the easiest to strip down and put back together and I think that is what you want as a beginner you want something that the pieces go back together like Lego so if you're a kid and you play with Lego they just click back nice and simple together so grab your floating nozzle slide that into the front that just locates and then you put this one back on that just screws back on now when you put these on just nip these up finger tight to the body you don't need to get a wrench and tighten really tight you just nip it to the body so it's snug so that's your front end back on you can drop your cup back in nice and simple these just push in that's your cup located get your needle beauty of these is as well they've got a self-locating chuck at the back just here so where that hole is just there you can drop your needle in slide that forward and then when you feel it go to the front end one finger on the back finger there and the thumb and then just nip that up and that's your needle in so when you move back on the trigger now that needle's locked in position then you get your sleeve setting where you see the sleeve setting that's got the little skull up here that goes on first like that way like that you slide that on there put your fingers like that and hold it in place get your back body slide your body on and then tighten that up and that's your brush back together so learning this on how to strip it down how to clean it that's a deep clean that's something that you don't really need to do after every session i would do that sort of clean every couple of months right guys so that is your brush stripped down that's the first thing that you need to learn is how to strip down and clean it so i would do that the minute you get it out of the box not clean it but strip it down and put it back together and that's why i chose the ultra today because you've seen how easy that brush is to strip down and that's what you want when you're starting out you want a brush that you know how to strip down and is easy to put back together and that is so we're going to move on to the next piece which is airlines and then sort of the connections that you can use for your airbrush now i've got one just here we've got a braided airline these come in different sizes i would say go for the braided ones are the best because they're flexible and they last a long time. This one is an Iwata braided airline, which I've had for a long time. This came with the actual compressor. So you get two sorts of connections. You get your connection this side, which is for your airbrush. And then on the opposite side, you get one this side size, and that's for your compressor. Now, some braided airlines come with two of those but your main one that you usually get on all compressors small compressors is the quarter inch one which is this one here so you want one with that side on and one with that I'll leave a link in the description to an airline this sort of size and I'd opt for a long airline as well don't go for a meter one go for something like a two meter one because I guarantee it you will always want a longer airline because if you've, got, if you've got a small compressor and you start out going mobile, you want a nice long airline to give you plenty of distance. If you're doing wall art, you don't want to be doing it with your compressor sort of like right up close to you. You want a nice long airline. So always opt for a longer one. So connections, that side for your compressor, this side for your airbrush. Now on the Ultra, you get a connection to the bottom these come on all hard and steam back brushes some airbrushes you don't get that connector which is basically part of like a quick connect so when you get your standard airbrush that doesn't have one of these on it you basically screw that to the bottom and I'll just show you that now so your brush would look like this and then you would have to screw this piece to the bottom like that now you can work like that but 
for me, you need the Quick Connect because it makes your life a lot easier when it comes to cleaning because you're permanently attached to your airline this way. So the connection that you need, if you have the Arda and Steenbeck, you will have this piece on the bottom, like that. So that is what you'd have on the bottom of your brush. Then you can opt for a Quick Connect, which is one of these. Now this one has got a regulator on it so you can dial your air pressure in. That would screw to your airline, where we just screwed the brush to. So you would screw that to your airline, so it looks like that. And then this piece clips to your brush. So when it comes to cleaning, you can just pull back on that connection, put your brush away or clean your brush. This won't let any air out because it's a pin where you pull down and once that clips back up it cancels the air off when you clip it into your brush it releases the air it's like a big spray gun setup you have the connections where you clip in on your big spray guns so that's the one i'd opt for as i say i'll leave links in the description to all these pieces so it makes your life a lot easier so that's your airline sort of setup go for a longer hose especially if you've got your compressor under the table a meter from the floor to your worktop, that's your meter gone. So a good long airline is recommended. So that's setting up your brush to an airline. We'll move over to the compressor side of things now and I'll show you how you hook your airline up to the compressor and I'll run you through the features on the compressor. Right guys, setting your airline up to your compressor. I just showed you the airline where you've got one for your compressor and one side for your airbrush. The one for your compressor side is the bigger one there with the thread on. That will screw to the, the piece on your compressor where you've got your filter here. So all mini compressors will have one of these on. And you screw this one to the front. So nice and simple, nip that up to the front and that's your airline connected. Your other side you would clip your brush to like that. So nice and simple, that's dead easy. That's your airline connected to your compressor. Now little features on your compressor. If you own one of these ones, I'll talk you through this. But the, basically they're all sort of the same. They all have the same sort of features. Some compressors are just like this and they don't have an air tank. This one has an air tank. It's the actual tubular frame here. That's the air tank on this compressor because you can see the two barbed air lines that come down and they come into this piece here. And then your air disperses out of here. You've got a regulator on the top that you can dial your pressure in on the top and you'll see your needle move up when we turn the compressor on. So you can see the needle going up. It goes up to pressure and then it kicks off. So that's up to pressure, nice and quick. Now you would connect your airbrush to that, press the trigger and you've got air. Like that. And then when you keep your finger on the brush, the compressor drops and then it, the compressor will kick in. Gets back up to pressure, like that. So you'd be painting, pressing your trigger, your air drops down and the, and the compressor kicks back in. And that's how these little compressors work. This would be under your table, kicking in, kicking out as you're painting. Now to set your air pressure up for a running pressure, so say you wanted to set your brush up to say 20 PSI, you've got your Gauge to the top here, and this shows in bar and shows in PSI. And you can adjust this. You take that up, you can see the needle going up. If you take that down, it drops it down like that. You can turn that all the way down so there's no air. So when you press, you've got no air. So the best way of setting your brush up is, trying to do this with one hand, press your trigger down and then bring your gauge up until you hit 
keep your trigger pressed down so the air's coming out your brush and set your pressure this way like that and then clip that down and that's how you would get your 20 psi continuous in your brush so that's a quick way of setting your compressor up nice and easy we've got 20 psi coming out if you wanted to run at 25 you do the same again press your trigger down adjust your regulator at the top and watch your needle go up to 25 and then click that back down and you've got a consistent air pressure so nice and simple i'll leave a link in the description to this one and a couple of other ones bonus with this one as well is you've got a airbrush mount to the top it's got a carry handle and they work really well so we'll move on to the next stage see you in a minute Right, we're now moving on to the paint side of things. Now, this is a really important as well. First off, we've sorted the brush out. So you know how to strip your brush down, you know how to clean it, maintain it, and put it back together. We've sorted the connections out, so you know that side of things, the compressor on how that runs. And now you're gonna move on to your paint, and it is finding a paint that's gonna work for you with your airbrush. Now, there are loads of brands of paint from real cheap budget ones and a lot of people tend to go straight down the cheap budget route go on Amazon buy a pack of paint that's like 20 quid and it's got every color in it and some of these cheap paints can be an absolute pain when you airbrush you have to get your consistencies absolutely bang on when it comes to airbrushing and running paint through it, you really do. It just makes your life a lot easier if you know how to get your consistency right. Now, I've always said in my previous videos for beginners, buy the cheaper paints to start out with just to get you a feel of what it's like spraying paint. Now, these are a couple of cheap ones, which is the crafter's choice. This is thick bodied acrylic. If you were to put this in the ultra, it wouldn't go through it. Even that's a 0.45 needle and nozzle setup, you wouldn't push this paint through it. You have to thin it down. So that's a cheap one. And then you can move on to your expensive ones. So practice on with your cheap paints first. I'll show you how to mix the consistency up on the cheap paints just to get you started. And then when you progress and you start doing pieces of artwork for people or you're doing your own custom things for yourself, you can move on to the more expensive brands where they will just they, they just flow perfectly so i'll move you in closer and i'll take you through some mixing of some paint some of the brands that i use and the mixing ratios that i work from right we're going to go through some little mixing for you guys just to get you sort of started and up to speed with your airbrushing now we've got some brands of paint my go-to ones are golden high flow acrylics these ones you can put straight in your airbrush and spray with absolutely fine and you can thin these as well now if i was using golden i will always thin it always and i will go one drop of golden out of one of these bottles go one drop of golden to one drop of water tap water or distilled water that's your sort of golden paint mix if you want to opt to use golden go sort of one to one if you were using Createx Illustration, which is a water-based acrylic again, this will spray, this one's a transparent and you get the opaque as well. You can get their reducer if you wanted to use their reducer, but you can use distilled water with Createx Illustration colors and that works absolutely fine. And I find a one-to-one -one with that again is good. You've got Wicked, which is another one by Createx. Now I've been doing the miniature portraits on the channel and how I'm mixing Wicked at the minute, I'm using the Wicked color and I'm using isopropanol and I'm using water. Now the way I'll mix that, when I do the miniature portraits, because I want it really, really thin with low pressure, I'll mix one drop of the Wicked to 20 drops of isopropanol and a couple of drops of water. And I find that mix running at five PSI on the airbrush works really well. You can 
use the Wicked reducer. I think it's the 4011 or 4010, I'm not too sure. But you can use that reducer with that paint. So that's the mixing ratio for that. We're gonna do some of the mixing in a minute. You then, you can get inks. Now, you can get FW inks. These ones are straight out the bottle. So you get a little pipette like that and you can see that's really thin. So these spray straight out the airbrush, not a problem with this paint. I've also got some of the Crawford and Black. This is an acrylic ink as well. They spray straight out the bottle. So you've not really got to mix them or thin them down. They can go straight through the airbrush, not a problem. When it comes to your cheap paints like this, these are the pound pot ones. So this is the consistency of this paint. And as I say, if you tried to put that through the Ultra, there is no way that that would spray. You'd have to thin it down. So we're gonna mix this one first. So you can see the consistency of that. And we're aiming to get that mixed to a consistency for the airbrush. Now, mixing this, I would go a drop of the paint, and then I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, say we'll go twelve. That's twelve drops of water, and you can see that's breaking down already. Give that a mix up, and you'll find with the thicker body paints, you've really got to give it a good mix. to break that paint down, but they will work. So that's mixing up really nice. And this Crafter's Choice isn't a bad paint. To start out with, the pigment's strong in it. So that was the original test piece. And as you can see that, that's like still sitting there we drop some of this on here, just let it build up. You can see that running like that. That's the sort of consistency you want for your airbrush. Now you can see that running down like that. That would be absolutely fine to work with and spray with through the airbrush. So you're aiming for like a semi-skimmed milk consistency to get it to flow like that. That's straight out the bottle and that's mixed. So that's how you'd mix your cheaper bodied paints. Aim to get the consistency. Go for one drop of the paint and just ballpark it about 12 drops of water. You may have to add a few drops more, but just ballpark it around 12 drops of water to that sort of consistency like that. And that would be absolutely perfect for airbrushing with. So that's on the cheap paint. Moving on to the inks, you'll see the ink straight away on how this is. Now this is one you can just put straight into your airbrush. You'll see the running consistency on the ink. It's exactly the same as what we mixed on the previous one. Flows really, really well. And that's what I mean by that one would go straight through the airbrush, not a problem. So your inks, you're absolutely fine. Createx Illustration will be the same, same sort of flowing out as the red. So that one straight in the bottle would go straight through the airbrush. Golden High Flow again just wipe that and I'll paint everywhere. This would be the same. See it running out? So that's actual airbrush paint. So that's the sort of consistencies you're after. For the semi-skimmed milk, your thicker body paints, like the Crafter's Choice, mixed down with water, 
you've got your inks that will go straight through your airbrush. Createx illustration, you can go one-to-one -one if you wanted to thin it a little bit more, but that will go straight through the airbrush. Golden High Flow, straight through the airbrush or thin it one-to-one. -one. And then my mix that I do the isopropanol with, with the Wicked, because this wicket is quite thick. You'll see the body on this wicket, how thick it is. You see that? That wouldn't spray through the airbrush. You can see it's not moving. It's just staying in the bottom of the pot. So then I would go for isopropanol in here. Quite a bit of that in. And you can see it doesn't break it down. You've got to stir it up. But once you get this stirred and start to break down, it will start to break the paint down. And this is the one I've been using on the miniature portraits and it works really, really well. As I say, you can get the reducer for the Wicked, but I find going the isopropanol route, it's the cheaper route because you can buy a litre of isopropanol for like seven pounds and a bottle of their reducer would probably cost you the same. And that's thinned out really nice. You can see that now, it's broke the pigment down and that's the consistency that I would use for the miniature portraits that I've just been doing on the channel. So a nice, easy mix and you can add a couple of drops of water to that as well. And that's the sort of mix that I'm using for the miniatures. So that's a little bit about paint mixing. Find a brand that you like. The ones on the table I'd recommend, they all work and I've been using these. I've used Golden the longest since I started. 14, 15 years I've been using Golden and I know exactly how to thin it. Works really well. Um, if you're wanting to go down the route of doing uh, photorealistic portraits and things where you see the artists where they do the erasing techniques and things like that, highly recommend Createx Illustration because you've got, you can work this paint with erasers very, very easy. Golden High Flow struggles with erasing. Wicked you can use with the eraser, that works well. Your inks, you can do a little bit of erasing with that. Um, your thicker bodied acrylics, it'd be a little bit tougher to do erasing with. But they're the brands that I use and I'll be using solvent paints as well, like solvent base coats and things. I have used that in the airbrush and that flows really, really nice. You'll be mixing that with the thinners. But always remember, wear a mask when you're if you're using solvent, if you're using water base, just make sure you've got a well ventilated room or an extractor running while you're painting. So we'll move on to the next one and we've got some test practice things for you to do guys for your trigger control with the Ultra and I'll show you the sleeve settings. Right guys, we're ready to do some test pieces. These are the pieces you can practice at home and this will get your trigger response down. We're going to go through the sleeve settings as well. I'm going to show you what the sleeve settings do. But the first thing to do with the airbrush, don't put any paint in it, hook it up to your airline and you compressor and drop water in it. So the first thing that you should be doing is dropping some water in and just having a go and see what the spray pattern's like with your airbrush. Now I've dropped a few drops of water in there now the Ultra is designed so you can't pull straight back. You have to press down. So that releases the air. So you can hear air coming out of there now. So you go down for air and then you start to pull back. So if I pull full back, you'll see the water mist against the black. And see that, that's full trigger. That's how much paint would be coming out if that was now paint. So working the trigger is key on airbrushing. You have to master going down for air and moving back for paint. And it's all about controlling how much movement you move back. 
The more you move back, the more you're going to get out. When you bring it forward, it's less and less until it cuts it off. So you've got to master the down for air, back for paint. So keeping the air on, and you're learning to just move that trigger for your paint. A lot of beginners tend to make the mistake of this. We'll get some copy paper, pin that down, and now we're gonna drop some paint in. A lot of beginners tend to just go down. The minute they get the paint, they start to draw with it and they do this. They get the paint and they do this, and they start to move. And then they lift off the trigger. And that is what you don't want to do. You've got to learn to go down, move back, move forward. So go down, bring the paint on, move, and then take the paint forward and take it off. On, off, on, off. And that's how you'll get full control of how much paint. So I can go on, you can see the dot, bring it back, bring it back, more and more and more and more paint. Minimal, minimal trigger. And this is how you'll get your trigger control down, is learning that down and moving back. And always keep your air on, bring your paint on, take your paint off and just work the trigger backwards and forwards and you'll eventually master where you can put minimal like you see when I do on the miniature portraits I'm putting minimal paint down just by working that trigger but you don't want to be doing this where you just go down find the paint and then start to draw with it so it's a beginner's mistake they do that and then they just lift off and then you get build-ups on your start and your stop, you get a build up. You want minimal. So you work it so you get points, point to point. So you get them nice points like that. So I'm gonna run through a couple of exercises for you on how to create the point to points and how to sharpen up on your minimal paint to maximum paint. Right, guys, the first one, nice and simple, draw yourself two lines, two lines going down. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna come in with your airbrush this way. I want you to come in with the airbrush this way with your air on. So put your air on, start moving, don't go slow, learn to move with the brush. Come in this way with your air on and then when you the brush comes to this line, start to move back on your paint, and we're aiming to put a line along here. So you're coming along with your air on and your paint on, and then when you come to this side here, where this line is, you're starting to take your paint off, so you're bringing your trigger forward, but keeping your air on. And you finish the stroke with your air on and your paint is off here. So air on, so it's down for air. Start to bring your paint in, bring your paint in, and then take your paint off and keep your air on. So it will look like something like this. When you're a beginner, you'll be doing this. Like that. Going back this way. Paint on. Paint off, keep your air on. Paint on, paint off, keep your air on. Paint on, paint off, keep your air on. You'll be starting to get lines like this. And what this is teaching you is trigger movement with your double action. This is a real good one to practice because it is getting you to teach you to put your air on, move along, bring your paint on, so you're moving back on the trigger, putting your line of paint down and then you're taking your paint off but keeping your air on. And as you get better and start to move faster, 
you'll start to get better lines. Like this. And you will eventually get point to points. This paint needs thinning out. It's just breaking up slightly. But you'll get a point and a point. So that's a real good one to practice is moving with the brush. Also, bring your other hand up to your brush to steady yourself and move. As beginners, you tend to do it like this and you will be like this, trying to keep a straight line because you're going really slow. But as you move quicker, you'll get more consistent lines and a better feel. A lot of beginners tend to move very, very slowly because they're over concentrating on what they're doing and they lock their bodies up really tight and they're rigid. You've got to be really soft and like loosen your shoulders and your body. Don't stay rigid. Airbrushing is a, a very fluent movement. You've got to learn to move with the brush. But this will come in time and practice. So that's the first one to practice is do some lines that way you can also do some lines that way. So you can do your up and down lines and you can do your lines across like that. This, is, will, get, this will get your trigger control down where you're moving down for air, bring your paint on, keep your air on, take your paint off, but keep your air on. Right guys, we've got another simple one to practice. As you can see, we've got some light triangular lines going out like that. This is another one you can practice where you can go on the side with your brush and you can sort of flick the paint out. Now, same sort of technique as you do with the lines where you're going down for air, but you are moving the trigger a lot faster. So you can go down for air, aim your brush around two or three inches away from the paper and you'll see me just flick the brush out like this. So down for air, paint on, and you're flicking the paint on and off. And that's creating that soft flick out with the paint. You can do this technique on more controlled when you're going in. Like that. It's a technique you can use when you're shading things. If you want that real soft gradient coming out. So it's up to the paper. We're about two inches away. You're aiming to hit here, and then as soon as you see the paint hit, start to flick away. And you can see the trigger action working that I'm doing there, just to create that soft flick out and fade out with your paint. So that's another good one to practice, and try that different angles with your brush. You can try it going upwards and eventually you can just do it without the lines there. It's just getting you to go different ways with the brush and not be static in one movement. Try your brush at different angles, moving around, applying the paint in different ways. These are all little practice techniques that you can do at home. Right guys, moving on to the next one. You've probably seen me do this loads of times on the channel, but if you've not, this is a must that you have to practice. It really is. Draw yourself a grid out like this. This will give you your accuracy. It will start to home you in on your accuracy. This is key, I think, to practice because if you're going in on a piece of artwork and you're looking at something to aim at, you want to go in and hit, you know, exactly where your paint's coming out. 
this is a brilliant one to practice. So what you've got to do is you've got to fill the squares. So you're aiming to put a dot. Just pull this paint through. See where I'm putting the dot inside the boxes. This will teach you your trigger control because you've just got to get it inside the box. So you're going down for air, back for paint, and then you're going down on for the paint and then taking the paint off, but keeping your air on. Always keep your air on, bring your trigger back, take your trigger forward and you'll get dots like this. So aim to fill the square up with the dot. I'm about two inches away and I'm using the full trigger on this. We're gonna do the sleeve settings next. So start doing your dots and then to home in again, go a little bit closer and then aim to hit the crosshairs. So you then can go and hit the crosshairs like that. You know exactly where you're going Every time you pick the brush up, you can just pinpoint exactly where to go. Right guys, we're gonna run through the sleeve settings on the Ultra. Now, you have full trigger, which is the full open scallop. Then you can move it to one, two, three. You've got base and primer. So we'll move it We've just used it on full trigger on the exercises there. What we'll do is we'll move it to level one. Now this will give you minimal paint. So you can press back on the trigger and then when you pull back, it will stop the trigger at a certain point and put a certain amount of paint down. So number one is minimal paint. So you could go in around an inch from the paper, pull back, and that's the amount of paint you would get down on one. We're about two inches away. So that's how much paint you get on one. So level one's good for, if you're doing say miniatures and you want to put a highlight down, if you backed off a bit further, you can see the softness that's putting down on number one, backing off, we're about a hand's distance away you get a lot, you get very minimal paint. So very good for sort of like highlights on a miniature. If you were holding a miniature like this and then spraying, you could put minimal paint down on that miniature, what you're spraying on. If you move it to level two, that's less, so that's even less paint. You can go right up with that. We're about 20 mil from the paper and I'm pulling the trigger back until it hits that stop mark and then moving forward. So that's how much sort of paint you're getting down there. And if I back off hands distance away, again, very, very minimum, you can hardly see it. Another good one for sort of highlights, if you was holding a miniature up even closer, sort of this distance, you can just see that wooden stick changing colour now with minimal paint. So that's level two. Level three is even less. So that's on level three. And if you were to do full trigger and move, That's the sort of paint you get down on three. So one is a bit more, two is coming down on the paint, and then three is the smallest amount of paint. Then you can move around to base. And base is putting a bit more paint down than the others. So if you were basing a miniature up, if that sticks your miniature and you're holding it in front of you, hands distance away, working that tree, you can see how we're changing color on that stick. 
quite quick on the base setting. So hands distance away and you can colour in or base coat a miniature really well. If you move to prime, this is putting a lot more paint down. So again, hands distance away. You would prime an object up quite easily with that setting. So you can use the settings on here if you want that little bit more control, if you're practicing your dots or your lines, you can go across with this brush and just set to one of the settings, like two. So you could practice your lines like that to that setting. And it's nice that you can just go down for air, you can bring it back to the setting gives you that amount of paint and then you can take your trig off forward to take your paint off but keep your air on. So it's a nice brush to learn with, especially using the settings if you feel a bit unsure of using full trigger. You can use the settings to your advantage on whatever sort of project you're doing. If you want that minimal dot you can go to level three pull back and then you can get that small dot just off that setting. It's not a problem. So it's a nice feature that's got this on there and you can use it as a normal airbrush and you can go full trigger. So you've got now full movement of that brush when you progress. You can switch it to full trigger and then you can start using the brush at its full potential. Right guys, we have come to the end of the video. There's gonna be a few little points I'm just gonna run over again with you. A little bit more about the compressor that I didn't mention on the compressor setup. All the other bits that I mentioned go ahead with absolutely fine, but once a week with your compressors, drain the bottoms of the tanks. Now, if you've got a tank compressor where it's got the cylinder at the bottom that stores the air, to the bottom of that tank will be a drain plug that you undo. And this will drain any moisture buildup out the tank. The quickest way to drain it is, take your compressor outside, plug it in, undo the valve and then turn the compressor on and you'll hear the air blast out the bottom of the tank and that will blow out any dirt or any water that's in your tank. If you're getting a lot of buildup in your filter trap, on the front, that means that you've not been emptying your tank. You're getting your water coming up and it's sitting in your filter regulator just here. If you've got discolored water, like brown in there, that's just like, like rusty water that's coming out your tank. So always say after every week, just blast the bottoms of your cylinders out on your compressors keep them clean, just empty them, because the little compressors do run warm. And with it running warm and then cooling down, running warm, cooling down, it's causing condensation in the tank. So you're just getting a buildup of water. So that bit clears that. Next is practicing your pieces that we did on the last part of the video. Now, doing these simple things, they may look very simple and boring. And I always say to people, do dots and lines, dots and lines, you can sit there doing pages and pages and pages. But if you do them correctly, how I said do them here, you'll be getting your muscle memory in your finger where it's down for air, back for paint. A lot of beginners, they go down for air, back for paint, and then when they take the paint off, they go like this, and they lift their finger off the trigger to stop the paint. And that's the wrong way to do it because the minute you do this, you get a build-up of paint on your piece of artwork. You get a dot, a big dot on the end of it, and you don't want that. You want to control that movement, so you go down for air, you bring your paint on, and then to take your paint off, don't lift off, take your finger forward, and it takes the paint off gradually. And this is what I mean by when you had the two lines that we did on the paper, you bring your air on, 
you come up to the first line, you start to bring your trigger on, which brings your paint on, you move along, and then when you come to the next line, you're coming up to it, you take your paint off, so you're bringing your trigger forward, but you're keeping your air on. You're not just lifting your finger off. I've seen a lot of people on classes where they start a beginner's class and they're doing this, taking the paint off like that. You've got to master that downward movement and moving back and moving forward. And that's where you'll get that nice transition of point to point. You're aiming for point to point. So when you do your artwork, you can rock that trigger and you can get them nice point to point. You'll see a lot of that on like dagger strokes, they call it, when they do hair textures, when you see people moving along and moving down, the trigger is moving forwards and backwards. They're not taking their finger off. You won't see pro artists doing a portrait and putting paint on and going like this and taking it off. It's very rare they'll be rocking that trigger forward. So it's just muscle memory. Takes a bit of time getting used to, but practice them techniques, practice the dots. Dots are a key one for homing in on your accuracy. If you're going on a piece of artwork and you're aiming to get, say, a black dot in a certain place, you want to be able to move your brush up and you can hit it every single time. So working the dots on the crosshairs and in the little boxes will hold you in good stead, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something along the way. I'll leave as many links as I can in the video description if you wanted to pick any of the pieces up that we've used today in today's video. Drop your comments. If you are new to the channel and you're enjoying this style of content for the beginners, drop your comments, tell me your thoughts and feedback. I'll get straight back to you in the comments. And remember, if you are stuck on anything, drop a comment in any of the videos, any of the 700 videos that are on the channel, the notification pops up, whether it's on any of the videos, whether it's a new one or an old one, I'll always go back and check the comments and put you a reply. Even if I'm hearting the comment or a thumbs up, but if it's a question that you're stuck on, I'm here to help guys and that's what it's about. Because there's nothing worse than struggling when you're a beginner. I've been there, done that, so I'll give as much help as I can. So thanks for watching, see you in the next one. <laughs>